Okay, here's our document that I'm kind of tired of looking at. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and close it, taking us back to this tab with our documents, and I'm going to click Create, and I'm going to click Spreadsheet, because I want to start looking at spreadsheets. We could also use the shortcut key, which is Shift S, but as with a document, that will open it in a new window, and I don't want to do that. So again, that's click Create, and then the fourth option down, Spreadsheet. And that takes us to the new spreadsheet. Now, just like with the document, if you click on the name, you can rename it. I'm just going to go back to my boring name and call this Example Spreadsheet. Now there are a lot of neat things you can do with a spreadsheet. Um, if you've seen them before, it probably looks kind of boring. If you've never seen them before, it probably looks really intimidating. There's a lot going on right here. Um, there's a lot to know about spreadsheets. There are people whose entire career uh, circles around them. I know a lot about them. I use them very regularly, but I still really only know the tip of the iceberg. There is so much to learn. But even the tip of the iceberg can be phenomenally useful and very, very powerful. So, first of all, looking at this, it looks a lot like the table we were just looking at. And that is very true. Each individual one of these little rectangles is called a cell, just like they were before. Where this differs is, of course, it's all cells. One thing that you can see that's kind of interesting, they're all labeled. This is A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, so on and so forth. And these go all the way down to T, and you can add more past that. And they drop all the way down to 100, and you can add more to the bottom, as you can see. Now, you can navigate by clicking around. You can also navigate by using the arrow keys. You can also navigate down by pressing enter. The first time you press enter, it allows you to enter text. The second time it takes you down. You can also move to the side by pressing tab. Now, just like before, if you press shift tab, it'll take you back. And if you press shift enter, just like pressing enter, first it allows you to enter text, and then it'll move you up one cell. To highlight cells, you can either click and drag, just like you could before. You can click on the title of the column, and that will select the entire column. Or you can click on the number of the row, and that will select the entire row. Additionally, the Shift key allows you to select rows and columns that are adjacent to one another. If I click on this one and hold Shift, I can then select everything within that range. Most of the time with spreadsheets, clicking and dragging works a little bit better. One other thing that you can do is if you hold Shift and move around with the arrow keys, you can highlight sections that way. That can be pretty handy if you like using keyboard and keyboard shortcuts like I do. Entering values, there are two ways to do that. You can either click on it and just start typing. You can double click on it to start typing that way. Or as we mentioned before, you can press enter and type that way. So I guess that's three, not two. I can count, I swear. Speaking of counting, one thing that's kind of fun that you can do, so say you want numbers 1 through 15 and you don't want to type them all. If you type out 1, 2, 3, you can actually just do this with 1 and 2 and highlight them. Here I'm highlighting them by moving this cursor to the upper left cell, A1, holding shift and pressing down. Then you see this little square here in the corner, the lower right corner of A2. If I move the cursor over it to get this plus sign, click and drag down to 15, it populates the numbers for me. That's pretty handy. One thing to be aware of, if you just highlight one and click and drag down, it will just copy that value. These both can be very useful. How, you might ask? Well, one thing else you can do, say you have 2, 4, and you want to populate this cell by 2's, it'll do that for you. 
One thing that's maybe a little bit more useful, if I highlight this square, type Saturday, press enter, type Sunday, press enter, then come up here, click in this cell, hold shift, click in this cell, then put the cursor over this little blue square till I get the plus sign, click and drag. It populates it with the days of the week. How cool is that? That has been so very useful. I've created so many calendars, chores lists, all manner of things using this method. One thing to be aware of is that you have to have both of those values, otherwise the coding behind it is not smart enough to figure out that you want a sequential list of days of the week. It just wants to copy those values. This also works with months in the year. As you can see, there's a lot more to cover when it comes to the cells. Just to give a quick overview, there's different types of formatting, data validation. You can change what sort of value it should be expecting. So if it should be dates, time, money, numbers, characters, all sorts of things. We're going to get more in depth with those as time goes on, not necessarily in this video. One other thing that is very useful, if you highlight these two cells and go to format, you can go to merge cells, merge all, and that makes one big cell. Why is that useful? What if you want time, preferred, chosen? This may look familiar because I was asking everyone for their preferred and chosen times. So this way you can create two columns under one heading with different values. It can be very, very useful. Again, in order to merge those cells, you would highlight both of them by clicking in one, holding shift and clicking in the other. Go to Format, Merge Cells, Merge All. Now it is important to note that you can also do this vertically as well as horizontally. First we're going to highlight a bunch of cells and click unmerge and that undoes the merging we did previously. Then if we click format, merge cells, merge horizontally, it makes all of these bigger rows. And just like in the document, if I hold control or command and press Z, it will undo my action. And we can of course get to that undo action by clicking on edit and undo. Now I'm going to close this and open up the schedule. Here we see an example of a spreadsheet that's had lots of formatting done on it. We can see that these items have been bolded, these have been bolded and underlined, the colors have been changed here. These colors have been changed to highlight when quizzes happen and when exams happen. These cells have been merged. This color has been changed. A bunch of things have happened on this spreadsheet. And perhaps unsurprisingly, this is also the schedule for the class. This may change, but we're probably still going to cover these things in this way.